Belle takes charge. Belle never tired of the Beast's marvelous library. It was her favorite room in the whole castle. She knew she could find any book her heart desired there. Reaching the books could be a bit tricky, though. The shelves rose all the way to the ceiling. Even with the, ladder, the library ladder, Belle still couldn't reach the higher shelves. One day, the Beast saw her struggling and offered to get a book she wanted. Oh, thank you, Belle exclaimed. It's that large history book. Can you reach it for me? The Beast climbed up. He had almost reached the book when he heard a sharp crack. The Beast was too heavy for the ladder. It broke apart. Thump! He landed on the floor. Are you all right? Belle asked as she knelt by his side. The Beast grumbled. The, la the splintered ladder was useless now. It's okay, Belle told him. We can build a new one. No, we cannot, the Beast snapped. He knew his... He knew his hands were too big and clumsy to handle most tools. Just leave it, he muttered, storming off. But Belle wasn't used to leaving things broken. Her father was an inventor, and he was sure she could figure out a way to build a new ladder. She turned to Chip. How would you like to help me surprise the beast with a ladder that's as good as new? The teacup grinned. I'd like that a lot. Where do we start? Right here, Belle winked. She pulled a book about woodworking off the shelf. With so many books... I bet we could learn to fix lots of things. According to the book, Belle and Chip needed lumber, a saw, and a hammer, and some nails to build the ladder. Luckily, there was plenty of wood and a box full of tools in the barn. Belle changed into a work dress. With Chip's help, she measured and sawed and nailed until she had built a ladder that was even sturdier and taller than the last one. Just wait till the beast sees this, Belle exclaimed. You made that? The beast asked when Belle showed everyone the ladder. He was surprised, but he was still seemed a little grumpy. C'est magnifique, exclaimed the candelabra lumiere. Yes, it's excellent craftsmanship, Cogsworth the mantel clock declared. Mrs. Potts the teapot hopped forward. I don't suppose you know how to fix a leaky faucet, too, she asked Belle. The one in the kitchen has a terrible drip. Ah, but yes, said Lumiere, brightening. There is also the fireplace. Her chimney makes so much smoke. Ahem, Cogsworth jumped forward. May I remind you that the service bell in the butler's pantry hasn't worked for a month. I think we can all agree that Belle should repair that first. The beast frowned. Don't be silly, he huffed. She's not a blacksmith or a plumber or a chimney sweep. Belle just smiled and led her friends back to the library. I have a feeling that with the right book we can fix anything, she said. To Cogsworth's delight, Belle went to the pantry first. The clock watched eagerly as she examined the broken bell on the wall. A cord that ran up to the beast's room was attached to it. If he needed something, he could just ring. But the bell seemed to be stuck. Bell found a home repair book that had a section on fixing hinges and read, and read the instructions. Why, it just needs to be oiled, she said. She poured a few drops of oil on the bell, and she gave it a tap. Dingling! The bell rang. Cogsworth jumped up and down. Fantastic, he exclaimed. It's as good as new. Next came the chimney. According to the book Belle found, the spokesnack needed to be swept clean, but that meant climbing onto the roof. Be careful, Belle, Lumiere called to her. Don't worry, she told her friends. I'm doing everything by the book. She used the brush to sweep out the chimney until she had removed every bit of soot. Once the chimney was clean, Belle went to fix the leaky faucet. She opened the repair book to the chapter on plumbing. It says we should tighten the pipe with a wrench, she explained. Belle twisted the wrench as hard as she could, but the joint wouldn't budge. She sighed. Suddenly, the beast spoke up. Uh, maybe I should try. Of course, Belle smiled gratefully. With one mighty twist, the beast fixed the leak. Look at that, cried Mrs. Potts. You two stopped the drip. To celebrate, Mrs. Potts made tea. Lumiere proposed a toast. To Belle, he said. And books, Chip added. Hip, hip, hooray, Cogsworth cheered. Belle grinned. I knew we'd find all our answers in the library, she told her friends. You were absolutely right, the beast said, patting Belle's hand. You were able to fix everything just like you said. Thank you. Belle went to bed that night feeling very proud and very tired. Just as she was about to blow out her candle, she heard a light tap on her door. It was Chip. Hello, Belle said, surprised. Why aren't you in bed? I couldn't sleep, Chip said. My music box stopped working. I always listen to it before bed. Can you fix it? Of course, Belle smiled. 
But first she would have to find the right book. They tiptoed to the library and searched for a book that described how to fix music boxes. They looked and looked. I'm sorry, Chip, Belle said at last. It doesn't look like there is one. Does that mean you can't fix it? Chip snuffled. No, Belle said. I'm sure we'll figure something out, just not tonight. That made Chip feel a little better. But how will I get to sleep now? He asked. Belle smiled. I think I can find another book to help you. They went back to the library, and Belle chose a storybook. Then she settled into a comfy chair with Chip on her lap. She opened the cover and began reading softly. Once upon a time in a faraway land. Soon Chip's eyelids were drooping. Belle quietly closed the book and carried him back to his cupboard. She had been right. There was nothing that a book and a friend couldn't fix. The end. Now this one.